Welcome guys. Okay, so in this lecture, we are gonna look at this papers first 10 MCQs of uh, chemistry A levels, uh, AS level basically 9701 May June 2002 series. Okay, and so let's get started. All right, this is the first MCQ that we have over here. All right, so now in the radioactive decay of an isotope of lead to an isotope of bismuth, a particle. Uh, minus 1x0 is emitted okay which particle is this all right so we need to identify which of the following options represent this particle so basically this particle has a proton number of minus 1 this proton number of minus 1 actually represents a negatively charged negatively charged species and uh, a species that has a charge of minus one so the species that has a charge of minus one is an electron and has a mass of approximately zero have an atomic mass of approximately zero so therefore this is option a is the correct answer now moving on to the second mcq as a simplification an adult human can be considered to have a daily diet of 1.8 kg of carbohydrate of this empirical formula okay which mass of carbon dioxide does a person produce each day if all the carbohydrate eaten is digested and is oxidized all right so this is the carbohydrate that we have and they are actually telling us that it's undergoing combustion complete combustion and it is giving us carbon dioxide as the product and they are asking us as one of the products so now they are asking us to, to calculate the mass of carbon dioxide that is produced due to the combustion of this uh, carbohydrate so that's uh, I'm not writing down the entire equation you guys know that this compound and undergoes combustion will give you carbon dioxide now looking at the equation uh, from the equation of our combustion analysis from the theory we know that whenever a hydrocarbon burns or uh, a carbohydrate burns in oxygen it will produce carbon dioxide having the same number of moles as the number of atoms of the carbon which are present in here okay so this means that one mole of this compound over here or uh, this carbohydrate this one mole of this carbohydrate will produce an equal amount an equal amount of one mole of carbon dioxide because the the value of x over here is one okay the value of x uh, in this carbohydrate is one so now let's first step is to calculate the amount in moles of this carbohydrate okay so to calculate the moles just use a conventional formula of moles is equal to mass in grams upon mr okay and upon mr of this compound so the uh, the mass in grams is 1.8 okay 1.8 is in kg so just multiplied by a thousand to get the mass in grams divided by uh, the mr of this compound which is 12 plus 2 times 1 plus 16 all right and this will give you an answer of 60 grams oh sorry 60 moles all right so 60 moles of this compound are burned so this will give you 60 moles of carbon dioxide now once you have the 60 moles of carbon dioxide because the mole ratio is 1 is to 1 convert this moles into the mass of carbon dioxide just rearrange this formula mass is equals to moles into mr moles multiplied by the mr okay so the a number of moles are 60 the mr of carbon dioxide is 12 plus 2 times uh, 16 which makes up 44 so 60 times 44 will give you 2640 grams all right but the answer options that we have are in kg so divide them by a thousand to get your answer as 2.64 kg so the answer to this question is part d okay d is the correct answer now moving on to the next MCQ number three the diagram shows the mass spectrum of a sample of naturally occurring copper all right this is the mass spectrum of naturally occurring copper okay on the y-axis we have the relative abundance 
on the x-axis we have the mass over charge ratio what is the relative atomic mass of this copper now guys to calculate the relative atomic mass of this copper using relative abundance okay remember one thing to remember over here one thing to notice over here is that on the y-axis we don't have percentage abundances but rather we have relative abundances so to convert the relative abundances into MR what we need to do is we need to first take the total abundances of all the different isotopes which are present in there so there are two different isotopes the total of their abundances is 10 okay the relative abundances 7 plus 3 is 10 now to calculate the atomic mass the relative atomic mass what you need to do is just take 7 over 10 multiplied by 63 okay what I have done over here is that I have just multiplied this relative abundance of 7 divided by the total abundance of the two isotopes and multiplied by the m over e of that isotope now once you've done this for the first isotope do the same thing for the second isotope and for the second isotope is going to be 3 upon 10 multiplied by its uh, m over e which is 65 in this case and now the answer to this that you will get is Sixty-three point six. So C is the correct answer. Let's move on to the next part. Okay. MCQ number four. A slow stream of water from a tap can be deflected by an electrostatically charged plastic rod because water is a polar molecule. What makes water polar? All right. So this is a structure of water. Okay. We have an O and two H atoms bonded by two covalent bonds. Okay. And there are two lone pairs on oxygen. Oxygen is more electronegative compared to the two hydrogens. So partial negative charge on oxygen and two partial positive charges on the hydrogens. Now, since there, uh, why do we have these partial charges? They are because of the difference in the electronegativities of the oxygen and the hydrogens. So the answer to this is going to be the oxygen and hydrogen atoms have different electronegativities due to which it is polar. It has a positive, a partial positive pole and a partial negative pole. Let's move on to the next MCQ number five. Okay, why does copper wire conduct electricity when a potential difference is applied? Okay, copper is a metal, right? And in metals, we have metallic bonding and metallic bonding is the association between the C of delocalized electrons, C of mobile electrons and the positive ions. But the positive ions are localized, they do not move. It's the delocalized, the mobile electrons that move to conduct electricity in this case. So the it's actually the bonding electrons in the crystal lattice that move. The, the electrons which are involved in the metallic bonding, they move to conduct the uh, electricity. Now let's move on to the next MCQ, number six. Okay, flask X contains one dm cube of helium at two kilopascals pressure and flask Y contains two dm cube of neon at one kilopascals pressure. If the flasks are connected at a constant temperature, what is the final pressure? All right, the trick to doing such questions is that first of all always try to draw a small diagram over here now this is let's say this is flask x this is flask y and they are connected by some tube and flask x contains helium at and the volume of helium is given as 1 dm cube and pressure is 2 kilopascals and uh, over here in y we've got volume as 2 dm cube uh, volume of neon gas and pressure is one kilopascals now after connecting the two flasks the total volume that we get is gonna be 3 dm cube okay the volume is gonna add up but the pressures are gonna change they are not gonna simply add up so the formula or the trick to doing this question is just use the formula ptvt meaning total pressure total volume is equal to p1 v1 plus p2 v2 okay i've used boyle's law over here right just plug in the 
respective values and you'll get your answer. Okay, we need to calculate the total pressure over here. So let's leave it as Pt. Now in place of Vt, plug in 3 dm cube. In place of pressure over here, let's assume that uh, P1, V1 are the pressure and the volume of X. So pressure and volume of X plus the pressure and volume of Y. Now once we have these, so the sum of them is 4 and 4 upon 3 is your answer, which makes it one whole number, 1 upon 3 kilopascals. Why kilopascals? Because the volume is in dm cube and the pressure is in kilopascals. Remember, whenever the volume given is in dm cube, your pressure must always be in kilopascals. But whenever the volume is given in meter cubes, the pressure must be in pascals. Okay, you have to be careful about the units. Okay, so the answer to this is A. Moving on to the next MCQ. When heated, solid iodine readily forms iodine vapors okay what does this information suggest about the nature of the particles in these two physical states of iodine all right iodine i2 remember it is a halogen which is a black solid at room temperature okay this black solid okay the the structure of iodine is such that it contains iodine molecules and within the iodine molecules we've got inside or the intramolecular force intraatomic forces or the intramolecular forces not atomic intramolecular force uh, are the covalent bond but the intermolecular forces are van der waal forces okay in both in solid state and when when the gas vaporizes when the gas vaporizes what when this uh, iodine vaporizes what happens is that this van der waal forces they are overcome and once these van der Waal forces are overcome, then you get iodine, still iodine molecules, but these iodine molecules are far apart from one another. So in both in the solid state, you've got iodine wave, um, in the molecular form and in the vapor phase as well, you've got iodine in the molecular state. So the option D is correct in here. Now, I'm seeking number eight. Which statement about the standard enthalpy change of formation of carbon dioxide is correct? All right. So we need to know the definition of standard enthalpy change of formation. The definition of standard enthalpy change of formation is that, that the enthalpy change when one mole of a compound forms from its elements under standard conditions. All right, so let's try uh, writing it down in the form of an equation. So now, for example, this is our carbon dioxide. We need to make one mole of carbon dioxide in the gaseous state from its elements. The elements in carbon dioxide are carbon and oxygen. All right, so just combine the carbon in the solid state with oxygen in the gaseous state. Okay, but we need to keep this mole one. Okay, we need to keep one mole. And yeah, the equation is balanced. Okay, one mole of carbon, one mole of oxygen forms one mole of carbon dioxide. The enthalpy change of this reaction is the enthalpy change of formation of carbon dioxide. Okay, and these uh, uh, elements are in their standard states. But if we look at carbon over here, one mole of carbon is burnt in excess supply of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. Okay, the enthalpy change when one mole of a com uh, of an element burns in the excess supply of oxygen is also known as the enthalpy change of combustion. Okay, so we can also say that this equation also represents the standard enthalpy change of combustion of the carbon atom. So. It is equal to the standard enthalpy change of combustion of carbon. Okay, so option A is correct over here. Now, MCQ number 9. Use of data booklet is relevant to this question. Okay, hydrazine was used as a fuel for uh, this rocket in World War II and for the American Gemini and Apollo spacecraft. And this is, uh, okay, this was just some... Uh, irrelevant data you don't need to know that okay, it has this formula over here this is the important stuff now what is the enthalpy change of atomization of one mole of hydrazine okay what is enthalpy change of atomization enthalpy change of atomization is the enthalpy change when one mole of a compound is completely atomized is completely separated into its atoms and in this case into nitrogen and hydrogen gases atoms all right so to do that we'll need to break these nitrogen hydrogen bonds 
this nitrogen hydrogen bond all the four nitrogen hydrogen bonds and the nitrogen nitrogen bonds okay and so now and when we add them up when we add all these energies bond energies we will get the enthalpy change of atomization now if we refer to the data booklet to, uh, to find out the enthalpy uh, the bond energy of nitrogen hydrogen bond okay so this is our data booklet uh, the nitrogen hydrogen bond over here has a bond energy of 390 kilojoules per mole so 390 and what about nitrogen nitrogen bond so it's 160 over here so nitrogen nitrogen bond has an enthalpy change of 160 now we've got the enthalpy changes how many nitrogen hydrogen bonds are there there are four nitrogen hydrogen bonds so the 390 is going to be multiplied by 4. The answer to these, when you add them up, add 4 times 390 to 160, you'll get 1720 kilojoules. All right, and this is the answer. Option B is correct. Okay, now let's move on to the last MCQ of this video. For which equilibrium does KC have no units? All right, so if we take a step back and remind ourselves the definition of KC, so KC actually represented the products to the power of their moles and the divided by the reactants to the power of their moles okay if we look at the first equation over here we've got the carbon monoxide hydrogen gas water in the gases state and carbon in the solid state these are all gases and kc does not apply to gases first and secondly we also have a solid in here so uh, they won't cancel out because solid is not included in the KC equations. Now, what about option B? Okay, if you look at option B, all of them are in the liquid phase. And if we write down that equation, it's going to be water to the power of its mole. One mole of water is present in this equation you multiplied by this ester to the power of its mole divided by the reactants. the power of their moles okay now since we've got two reactants in the numerator and two reactants in the denominator so their units will cancel out the units of concentration will cancel out and hence we'll have no units in here so therefore option b is correct all right thank you so much guys this is it for uh, this video uh, we'll continue with the other MCQs with the remaining MCQs in the next lecture. Okay, thank you so much.